This is your weekly report on corruption in the Philippine government. A 35-year-old Bureau of Management and Penology member was arrested in a by-bust operation in Sisio 5, Barangay Bagumbayan, this town, Thursday, the 14th of July. The suspect was identified as Eugene Bactard, a resident of Barangay Bagumbayan, and listed by the police as a high-value individual in the illegal drugs trade. Police received a report that Bactard is involved in illegal drug activities. The report was validated and a by-bust operation was conducted leading to the arrest of the suspect. Seized from Bactard were three sachets of suspected shabu with an estimated weight of 10 grams and marked money. A happy trigger policeman is facing administrative and criminal charges after he indiscriminately fired his firearm while drunk in Barangay Lagao here Tuesday, the 12th of July. Police Lieutenant Colonel Aldrin Gonzalez, spokesperson of the General Santos City Police Office, said charges for illegal discharge of firearm and grave misconduct have been filed against Police Corporal Greca Paras, assigned to the Mobile Patrol Unit, after he, together with several companions, figured in a shooting spree in Barangay Lagao. Gonzalez said Paras surrendered to the superior, Police Lieutenant Colonel Ramon Ginchanis, Wednesday, the 13th of July, in Camp Famine Lira here after he was positively identified through a closed circuit television camera footage as one of two persons who indiscriminately fired a gun in front of a convenience store in Pioneer Village, Barangay Lagao. The store owner, Mark Anthony Lansangan, reported the incident to police station 3 which immediately dispatched responding policemen to the scene. Police Captain Miguel Angelo Quadilla, police station 3 chief said the suspects had fled the area when responding policemen arrived at the scene. Gonzalez said the Philippine National Police Internal Affairs Service is set to probe the administrative case of grave misconduct against the erring cop while that of the criminal case of indiscriminate firing will be conducted by Police Station 3. The president of a medical supply company has been found guilty by the Supreme Court of violating Republic Act No. 3019 or the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act for conniving with local public officials by participating in a flawed bidding, resulting in unwarranted benefits and advantages in his favor. This case is related to the February 2015 Sandagan Bayan conviction, affirmed with finality also by the Supreme Court in March 2019 of former Jenny Uai. Iloilo Mayor Frankie locks in for graft regarding the purchase of medicines from two companies that were owned by one person. Vilan Weather and several local government officials of Janeura. Iloilo were charged by the office of the Ombudsman with violation of RA 3019 for allegedly conniving with each other for the purchase of medicines worth 13,191,223 pesos from Eurofarma. Notwithstanding the fact its accreditation was still pending with the Department of Health when it was awarded the contract, thus disqualifying it from bidding. It was also alleged that Vilan Weather was the sole proprietor of Malik's Drug Center, a supplier which participated in the same public bidding and was awarded 1,744,926 pesos. The Sandagan Bayan held that all the accused conspired with each other and were guilty of violating Section 3, E of RA 3019 for awarding the contracts for the purchase of medicines to the business entities of petitioner. The Department of Public Works and Highways failed to establish the viability of 3,440 infrastructure projects worth 245.021 billion pesos which resulted in either delayed completion or non-implementation of the projects. A report from the Commission on Audit showed, in their 2021 audit report, state auditors said the DPWH's projects were contrary to the provisions of Republic Act No. 9184, or the Government Procurement Reform Act. The projects include school buildings and farm-to-market road projects across the country, including 437 projects amounting to 10.939 billion pesos which have not been started at all. Several reasons were cited in the report, such as typhoons, prolonged acquisition of road right-of-way, permits and clearances from other government agencies, unsatisfactory performance of contractors, revisions and feasibility studies, and engineering plans. Except for the COVID-19 pandemic and adverse weather conditions, the other identified causes of the delay in the implementation of infrastructure projects reflect the inadequacy of planning, supervision and monitoring of management relative to the project implementation, the audit team commented, and supported expenditures amounting to 11.538 billion pesos were also made by the DPWH without proper and complete supporting documentary requirements, 
Contrary to Presidential Decree No. 1445 or the Auditing Code of the Philippines, the disbursements include payments of advances to contractors, fuel oil and lubricants payments, COVID-19 hazard pay, as well as salaries and wages of job order, contractual, and budgetary personnel. The above disbursements payments made without proper or complete documentation rendered the transactions of doubtful legality, propriety, or regularity, hence, the same shall be suspended in audit until the requirements are duly complied with, the audit team said. The audit team also noted technical defects in 369 infrastructure projects with total contract cost of 11,860 billion pesos, resulting in deficiencies of at least 508,581 million pesos. Among the cited effects were major scaling and multiple cracks on concrete pavement as well as defects in masonry, structural concrete and painting works and curbs and gutters in the Cordillera administrative region. 14 foreign assisted projects of the Department of Transportation, DOTR, worth 1.61 trillion pesos suffered setbacks in implementation last year, forcing the government to pay 128.42 million pesos in additional fees to several lenders financing them, according to the Commission on Audit, COA. State auditors reviewed the project's status as of the end of 2021 and found common problems in implementation, among them issues in procurement, and financial and technical concerns. In a 2021 audit report on the DOTR, the COA said these led to prolonged implementation and changes in project cost and scope, and caused some to be restructured. It bears stressing that the issues encountered in the implementation of the projects should be immediately addressed to prevent further extension of services projects completion implementation period, and consequently incurrence of additional commitment fees charges in case of extension of the loan validity period, the COA said. The COA report said the 14 projects faced similar issues due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the project site's condition or availability, and design, scope, and technical concerns. State auditors lamented that issues in the implementation of the projects, which included the improvement of rail systems, replacement of license plates, and the public utility vehicle modernization program, affected the timely usage and enjoyment by the public of the benefits that could be derived therefrom. The Commission on Audit, COA, may have an unmodified opinion of the Office of the Vice President, OVP, under Lenny Robredo, but it still flagged the OVP for hiring a private lawyer supposedly without adhering to COA rules. According to the 2021 COA report, the OVP engaged the services of a private lawyer as a legal consultant without the prior approval of the COA and the Office of the Solicitor General, OSG. Without such approval, public funds used to pay the private lawyer may be disallowed or ordered returned, as stated in a circular that COA released on the 19th of April 86. According to the 2021 COA report, the payments are considered irregular and unnecessary expenditures and shall be the personal liability of the officials concerned. The COA audit team also found out that there was no valid reason for hiring a legal consultant necessary. It noted that the OVP created its own legal affairs division in 2020 with two legal officers employed as part of its institutional strengthening efforts. It is believed that the contracted legal services can be handled by OVP's legal officers. As such the hiring of a legal consultant is not justifiable, the COA report said. COA urged OVP to hold accountable those who approved the contract and the payments and have them refund the money paid to the private lawyer. It also advised the current OVP to appoint someone to head the legal affairs division. An election official was shot to death in Isabella City, Basilan, while supervising the ongoing registration of voters for Albaca Municipality in the province Tuesday. Lieutenant Colonel Jun Pakasitin, Isabella Police Chief, identified the victim as Ruayana Sayadi, the election officer of Albaca Town. Sitin said Sayadi was in front of the Albaca Satellite Municipal Election Office in Barangay Dona Ramona, Isabella City, when a gunman approached and shot her around 3 p.m. Tuesday. Sayadi was rushed to the hospital but was declared dead on arrival by the attending physician. Sitin said the suspect fled on a motorcycle towards the city proper of Isabella, based on information gathered from witnesses. Lawyer Roberto de la Pena, the Basilan provincial election supervisor, strongly condemned Sayadi's killing and urged the police to investigate and solve the crime. The Sandagan Bayan has sentenced a former Sama town mayor to up to eight years in prison on graft charges filed by a municipal employee who exposed anomalies in the local government unit. In a decision dated the 18th of July penned by Associate Justice Alex Quiroz, 
The anti-graft court convicted former San Sebastian town mayor Arnold Abalos for removing municipal planning and development coordinator Roberto Robogera from his post, after he shed light on unremitted workers' contributions to the government service insurance system, GSIS, in 2012. The mayor had been earlier convicted on separate graft charges. The accused claimed he decided to relieve Robogera, citing absenteeism where the complainant was allegedly reporting to work only thrice a week. Robogera, meanwhile, said his replacement stemmed from his and other municipal employees' previous filing of cases against the mayor, including a complaint for the non-remittance of GSIS contributions. In convicting Abalos, the court, among other things, said the complainant was denied the opportunity to explain his side and that the manner of his removal from the post was attended by irregularity as it was only done by means of a mere memorandum, and supported by any complaint, investigation or formal charge. Unidentified gunman ambushed and killed a village official in Pickett Town, Cotabato Province on Wednesday morning, Madge Maxim Peralta, Pickett Police Chief, said Datu Jalandoni Matalamakis, 58, village chief of Barangay Macabul, was on a motorbike with his wife when they were attacked by still unidentified gunmen along the National Highway in Barangay Nalapan. Akers died on the spot while his wife was unharmed and the gun attack that happened around 8 a.m. The gunmen on board separate motorbikes then fled after the shooting. Heading for the town proper, it was the second daylight shooting in Pickett in two days. Hot pursuit operation is still ongoing, Peralta told a local radio station in an interview. Matalam's relatives claimed that the victim had no known enemies and roamed around without firearms or armed escorts. On Tuesday afternoon, unidentified gunmen also ambushed and killed Alex Salcedo, 58, an employee of Pickett Water District. He was on motorbike when the suspect shot him from behind in Barangay Bachelon at around 2 p.m. Department of Social Welfare and Development, DSWD, Secretary Erwin Talfo proved once more that he won't tolerate abuses after two erring employees were mitted out disciplinary actions. The DSWD said on Tuesday that one employee assigned at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport, NAIA, and another at the satellite office in Tagbilaran City, Bohol were relieved from their posts for inappropriate behavior. They were also reprimanded and made to undergo retraining on proper treatment of clients, according to a news release on Tuesday. Instead of assisting them to make them comfortable from their travel abroad, the action of the said employee toward the mother and child was not in accordance with the health standards set by the Inter-Agency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases for Arriving Minors, Talfo reported, without specifying what the employee violated. The Takbilaran City employee, on the other hand, rudely talked to her client who inquired about inclusion in the Pantoid Pamilayang Pilipino program, the conditional cash transfer program. On the 7th of July, Talfo posted an apology on Facebook and vowed to investigate the incident. Five other employees assigned at the hotline center were reprimanded and duly warned for not responding to calls. Five employees assigned to our hotline operations were reprimanded and warned for not answering calls. What is the use of hotline numbers if no one will answer the calls Talfo said in a statement. The anti-graft court Sandagan Bayan has fined for Cipolle City, Negros Occidental Town officials for frauds against the public treasury in connection with anomalies in equipment lease contract with a private firm in 2008. In its three-page decision written by presiding Justice Amparo Cabotage Tang and promulgated the 15th of July, the court found former city treasurer Renato Manila. Budget Officer Fernando Balbin, Engineer Porfirio Calderon Jr., and General Services Officer Eliza Balbin guilty and sentenced them to a fine of 40,000 pesos each. Two accused, former Mayor Soledad Montilla and Executive Assistant Alfredo Lim, had died while the case remained pending. Montilla and the other accused were originally charged with violation of the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act, Republic Act No. 3019, on the 29th of June. 2018 for alleged anomalies in a deal with the city government in 2008 where they were accused of giving unwarranted benefits and preference to DK Jockson construction. The irregularities allegedly occurred when the firm's contract for the lease of heavy equipment used in the rehabilitation of a dike and graveling of farm to market roads in the city was renewed from March to December 2008. The Commission on Audit, COA has flagged the decision of the Talisay city government to purchase high-end laptops and personal computers used for engineering and video editing purposes. In its 2021 annual audit report for Talisay city, the state auditing body called the city government's attention to justify its procurement of five PC sets and two high-end laptops amounting to a total of 610,750 pesos. 
COA described the cost incurred by the local government as imprudent use of government funds since the latter was unable to sufficiently defend the necessity to buy high-end consumer electronics. Citing COA Circular No. 2012-003, state auditors said high-end or expensive models brands of electronic gadgets such as mobile phones, desktops, and laptops are considered unnecessary expenditures unless they are properly justified. The five PC sets and one of the high-end laptops were intended for the city engineering office. Another high-end laptop was charged under the office of the city mayor. The purchases were made between May and June of 2021. The report showed, while the procurement of information and communications technology equipment such as laptops and desktops are necessary for effectively discharging the two offices duties and responsibilities, prudence and the use of funds must be always taken into consideration so that public procurement is done in the most judicious and economical manner, portions of the COA report stated. That's all for this week. I'll see you next week with more stories of corruption and foolishness within the Philippine government.